Hello, welcome to another video. This video is gonna be on what is a CAD sculptor, what's a digital sculptor, what's a CAD modeler. These are all titles I've had in my career working for the automotive design industry. And um, I've worked nine years in, in these different companies. And in that time, I have worked in basically all steps of that process. So I kind of want to like demystify it a bit, right? So first we need to talk about the actual process. Every car model starts off as a sketch with a package, right? We know the wheelbase, the length, the overall height, you know, where the hood is going to be and all that. And with that information, we make a very rough concept model, right? We're just trying to get that idea across. And as we start to develop it, we start sending that file to the engineers and then they ask us for different changes for millions of different reasons uh, from pedestrian safety to uh, manufacturability to heating to, to millions of things. Once we make the necessary changes, we need to actually evaluate this in full scale. So we're going to mill it out of clay or foam. And then this way we could actually walk around it and see a lot of things that we didn't notice on the computer screen. And many times there'll be a clay staff and they will do the changes that the designers and the directors want. And then from there it will get laser scanned and returned to me where I implement all those changes digitally. So from here it goes more to class A and the reason why it's called class A is because in production there's always an A side and there's always a B side. The A side is the side that the consumer sees, the pretty side, you know, any, all those little details, anything you see or touch is the A side and everything, all the surfacing, all the engineering work on the back, that's called the B side and that's why they call it, you know, uh, class A. And usually this is where it goes from design studio to headquarters and this part of the process is actually the longest part because there's a lot of refinement and there's just a lot of different movements just to make sure that the car can be made and it's safe and all that. So through that whole process, there is CAD being developed by someone like me, a CAD sculptor. I need to know what the designer wants and what the engineers need. And now you come up with the best form possible, giving the time constraints and all the other constraints needed in the production process. So within the industry, there's actually different specialties and each specialty has its own sort of skill set that really helps a person either shine or, you know, maybe something that they don't really like, you know, because someone who's uh, more into the technical side of it um, and the production side of it like they're not going to do very well in the concept stage of it where you just get basically a blank sheet and um, and you have to create the 3d form and so any and, and, and maybe that person who does the concept stage maybe they don't have the best like highlight control but um, they're very quick at making different models and different iterations of the model and that has its own value so all these specialties have their own like sort of skill set and it doesn't mean that if you can't have perfect highlights doesn't mean that you aren't as valuable or or more important in the design process because that's kind of like the the thing i i love about uh, cad modeling is that whatever you enjoy there's there's usually a part of the process that you'll really shine at you know um with concept it's very creative it's very get, getting the form and space, you know, um, uh, but that can also have its own pressure, you know, and refinement. It's sort of like grabbing that data and making it into this perfect sort of form and, you know, making all the highlights uh, beautiful. And that's also very nice. And then we got the production side and that has to do with a lot of the engineering side of it. You know, um, that has it's very tedious work, but a lot of people enjoy it a lot. And um, and actually, that's where I started. So what are the tools of the trade? The main software we use is Alias Surface or Alias Automotive. And that's about 95% of the jobs out there. Uh, the other five will probably be Isom Surf. Me, I actually recently have been using Rhino a lot because I do parametric work using Grasshopper. That's another industry that's sort of starting to blossom a lot. As you can see from the concepts, a lot of people are doing very parametric uh, like grills and different design elements like that. And um, in terms of polygon modeling, a lot of people use Blender, a lot of people use Maya, and, um, and it's kind of this sort of cage modeling is sort of the same thing inside of Alias with Sub-D. And that's also getting implemented in other softwares like Rhino. And, um, but I wanna stress the fact that polygon modeling is a very um, small aspect of this industry because in the end, it has to be nerve modeling. And nerve modeling is what you see in my, in my uh, channel and it takes a long time to learn,
but it is uh, and it also takes a long time to even model something because i see a lot of times in the comments people are like oh i could have like why is this so difficult i could have done this like you know uh, uh, in in one day or you know in 10 minutes in polygon modeling and that's that's because there's two different needs for those two types of models polygon it's very much a visual model it's to it's for um, games and for visualization design you know um, iterations but when we're talking about production when we need to have fine control every, over everything it's always going to be NURB modeling and that is like the basically what you see in my channel I wanted to show you guys an example of what like surface refinement is you know uh, this body side of Electra most people would be happy with it and they wouldn't even know that there's something wrong with it or anything like that but I noticed that some of the reflections weren't really lining up how I wanted them to so I went through it again and I pushed in some of the volume to make it so that the whole reflection uh, was, was smoother through the whole body side. So as you can see here, the red is the older part and the blue is what I did to fix that um, infliction in the, in the reflections. And this is what I get paid to do. Like I, am, I need to understand exactly why it's doing that and how I could fix it because uh, an infliction like that would never fly in the industry. Um, you know, there's even people that's their whole job. They just take in the our CAD data and they just uh, they just go through the zebra stripes and they they give us back a huge document saying uh, where everything was is wrong or you know needs correction and and then you go through another round of just refining the surface. But this is the sort of like high level stuff that you're doing for the automotive industry. Here are some of the things I love about my career. You play a vital role in the process of creating these vehicles. So when you see it out on the road or if you see it in like a car show or even if it doesn't get shown publicly and you're just seeing it out inside the studio and you know people the directors are are you know choosing which direction to go you know just seeing the complete model at a, such a high level especially when you're surrounded by very talented people it does bring you a lot of pride another thing i love is that i get to model all day every day it is my career um you know and i i've been modeling since i was a child and it's something that i genuinely enjoy doing i love 3d modeling um, I get to remodel all day, every day, and like we're talking, even after coming home from like a 10, 12 hour work day, sometimes to decompress, I'll turn on my computer and model some polygon stuff, you know, because that's just, that's just what I genuinely enjoy to do. And, um, and I really, I turned my passion into my career, and I, I don't regret that in any form ever, because it's really, it's really, I consider it a blessing being able to go to go to work and genuinely enjoy what I'm doing. And that's in every stage of the process. You know, I've worked in every single like position and and every single like from the beginning to the end. And each has its own challenges and rewards. And I enjoyed every like second of it. <laughs> Another positive is that the pay is very good compared to most careers. Um, I, I personally started at like 35 an hour and then I moved up to, to uh, 50 relatively quickly. And then, um, and then now if you're like a senior, um, you could be making up to $75, $80 an hour. Um, if you're a rock star, um, you could be making up to 100 120 an hour. And that's a 9 to 5. So with overtime and all that, you can easily clear six figures relatively early in your career. And, um, and then even for client work, which is obviously a much shorter contracts, that bill rate can go anywhere from 100 to 150, 200. It really depends on, on your company, on, on your clients and all that, but it's definitely a very well paying career. So what are some of the bad parts of my industry? Uh, we deliver the final data. So the pressure is always gonna be on us to get it done. As in if a, a director comes and makes a last minute change, the, the, the timeline usually can't be moved. Um, so, so the people who are there till midnight is usually the CAD staff. So that can give you a very bad work-life balance. Another thing to consider is that there isn't many jobs out there. Um, in a relatively big company, 
one of their design studios might have 15 to 20 uh, CAD people um, inside of a smaller, like a startup, there might be six jobs available. And you know, there isn't that many car companies and there isn't that many car design studios. So it's a very difficult industry to get into. Once you're inside, it's a lot easier, but, um, but it's just extremely difficult uh, because for every job, if, if there's no one that already, that we already know is good, if, if they kind of go out to the open market, they're gonna get hundreds of applications. And so it's very difficult. If, if you're from another country, if, uh, if you need a, some sort of visa, it's like almost impossible. Like I always tell people like, you know, it sucks because you guys, I, so many of you are so extremely talented. Um, and I, every time I look at it, I'm like, like, I know you guys can already contribute to a design studio. But a lot of times, just the fact that you aren't American or, or there's some sort of visa issue, it's, it's enough to basically make it almost impossible for, for people to get through. Another thing I really hate about my industry is the politics and the middlemen between me and the work. Um, I've been in situations where the whole staff is happy that I'm there. They love working with me. I love working there. But the only reason that that contract got terminated was because the contract houses weren't happy with how much money they were making or or they were trying to get me out so that they could put someone that they'll make more money off of. And this happens all the time. And it's very it's very it's many times a contract house will be making more an hour than the actual person make, doing the job, which I know is common in many industries, but this is a very high level, high skill industry. So I always tell people that you guys have to really watch out with all these contract houses. Uh, you have to uh, talk to the person next to you, ask them how much they're making. You know, many times two people can be right next to each other and don't, they won't realize that the other person who, who has less years than them is basically making an extra 30 bucks an hour because he knew what the what what the the worth of of his hourly rate was and um and these contract houses will gaslight you and tell you like they'll, they'll the every time you get you the contract is done they'll be like oh uh you know the the this company ended it it's always the company's fault or anytime a contractor leaves it's always the contractor's fault it's never their fault and many times it's them doing all this stupid shit in the background. And, um, and I'm actually gonna probably do a whole video on this later, but, um, but it's really important to try to educate yourself so that you don't get exploited by these people. I don't wanna leave the video in such a negative tone because regardless of the issues inside my industry, I genuinely love being a CAD sculptor. I love my job. I've never not loved my job. It's definitely a dream come true. And it's a, a dream that was very uh, impossible for me as well. You know, I got kicked out of two high schools and I don't have a college degree, um, but I always kept working until I got I accomplished my goals. I always knew that if my skill set was good enough, I will overcome anything and I always tell people that that well that that's how you should live your life don't worry about anybody telling you that you're not going to make it uh, i've had a lot of people tell me that in my life because they couldn't make it you know um and they they didn't reach anywhere close to to what i've accomplished in my career you know so if there's any naysayers in your life telling you that this and this won't ever happen don't pay attention to them because they don't know what's in store for you you know and if you keep working you will get to accomplish your dreams at least that's how i look at life i also want to end the video thanking my subscribers and all the people who have sent me such nice emails um uh, thanking me for my videos um it's a it's a pleasure to be able to help you guys in your journey and it's really nice to see how much you guys are progressing with your portfolios it really amazes me uh every day what you guys are accomplishing so uh thank you